back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Lindsay. And if you're returning, thank you so, so much for continuing to watch my videos. It seriously means the world to me. I'm excited to get into today's video because it actually is a remake of the very first video I ever uploaded on this YouTube channel, which was back in March, 2020, before like I officially launched my channel. Nonetheless, it was the first video that I've uploaded on my channel. So I'm excited to redo it because when I made that video, it was like on my phone. It was vertical instead of horizontal. It's just like not great. I've learned so, so much over the past year about video. I have a new camera. By no means an expert on my video videography skills, but I'm better than I was last year. So I wanted to update this video as of a new hair color. I mean, so many things have changed in the past year. So I figured it would make sense to give you guys a little update. And that video is all about how I curl my hair using the dry bar three day bender. This curling iron has been like my tried and true curling iron since college. I have absolutely loved it. I destroyed one in Europe when I was traveling there in college. So I had to buy another one, but it seriously has lasted me so, so long. And one of my favorite things about this curling iron is that the barrel actually moves. So I find that it's so much easier to curl my hair. Definitely takes some getting used to when you are first starting out with it, but once you get the hang of it, it's amazing. So I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how I use it and I'll teach you how to use the little spinny barrel thing. And I'll show you how I get my beautiful Dallas, Texas big curls. So let's jump right in. Let's get after it because I'm ready for my hair to not look like this fluffy hot mess. First things first, turn your curling iron on. I like to keep mine around 380. I've found that that seems to be like a good heat for my hair. I'm not a hairstylist, so take that, leave that. I don't know, you do you. That seems to be the temperature setting that works best for me. So I'm just gonna brush my hair out and I did wash and blow dry my hair yesterday, so it's not too dirty. If it was a couple days old, I'd probably put some dry shampoo in it, but today we are, we're good to go. I still part my hair on the side because I'm not in Gen Z and I still think side parts are cool so come at me. Once I get my hair all brushed out I like to put some kind of heat protecting spray on. I've gotten a couple different ones over the years. This one I got from a hair salon it's called Protein Spray. It's from Label M. It just says it's UV protection evens out porosity for all hair types. Then on the back it says that it protects hair against heat styling sun and damage while providing seductive oh seductive shine. So, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of that all over my hair. Getting into the good stuff, how I actually curl my hair. So, depending on how much time I have, I will section my hair into either like two to three. I might just do no sections. So, today I'm just gonna section it into two different parts because I've found recently that that's been working well for me and kind of the quickest, easiest way to get it done. So I just take about half of my hair, section out the bottom half, tie the rest of it up in just like a clip or scrunchie, whatever. Floats your boat. Normally I don't make it this pretty, but like for you guys, I'll make it pretty. <laughs> All right, and then I just take it and basically like feel where the middle is in the back of my hair and then just section it to either side. I pretty much always start with this side of the hair. I don't know why, it's just the way I go. And I always want my curls to be like curling away from my face. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your curling iron, take the clamp, and I like to start at the top, like near the root of my hair, flip it around, pull it down to the ends, not so far where it's gonna fall out of the barrel, and then I just like to either twist with the, in case that was a fail at explaining that to you, let's try that again. All right, so I like to start at, but see how, See how quickly it curls? Like that wasn't in there for any time at all. So start at the root, flip your hair to the back, pull down, and then I just start twisting. And I either twist like with my hands, like a normal curling iron, and then where I use the twisty barrel is at the very top. So once I curl back up to the root, I twist the barrel so that way the ends actually come all the way through so that I can get my ends to be curled as well. You don't need to hold it for that long, at least you don't for my hair. I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds, and then pull it out and you've got a beautiful curl. Beautiful. And then I like to let my curls just hang out, sit, 
fully intact. I don't brush them out until the very, very end or usually even when I get to like wherever I'm going or like right before I hop in my car, I'll like run my fingers through it. So I like to leave my curls intact. That way they can really like get the shape of the curl and that way they don't fall as quickly. So that is my strategy. And then we're just gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Again, starting from the front and just curling away from your face. Put that clamp near the root, pull through, and then wrap it all the way up, then twist the barrel to get the ends in the curl as well. And I just grab like a decent chunk. I mean, nothing crazy because you don't want to overwhelm the curling iron with too much hair, but I will say I've done plenty of curls where I grab like massive chunks of hair if I'm trying to go super quickly or just touch up my hair I'll grab some bigger chunks and just like throw them in there but for the initial curl I like to get a little bit of a smaller smaller chunk in there starting to fall a little bit which is exactly why I like to leave those curls super intact before brushing through them and like as long as possible I like to leave them nice and curly but we're gonna just let this side cool off a little bit and then spray some hairspray on it and honestly I used to just use big sexy hair like religiously and to be honest I've tried so many other hairsprays since and they all feel the same to me. So I don't know if you guys have a favorite hairspray that you claim is to die for and actually makes a huge difference. Let me know because I would love to hear that because honestly, every other hairspray I've tried seems to be like the exact same. Now that these are cooled off a little bit, I like to just throw everything to the back of my hair and then spray a nice layer of hairspray on them. Don't want those curls going anywhere. Onto the top half of my head, start at the back for the top section of my hair, just to make sure I'm not missing any of those straight pieces in the back. That's the worst when you like get somewhere and you find out that you've missed a curl. You, you're screwed, you're out of luck. You can't have a pocket curling iron. If that existed, that'd be pretty cool. I feel like they actually do have that. <laughs> now that I think about it, they definitely have pocket straighteners, like super small mini straighteners. I don't know about curling irons though. That'd be a fun invention. Maybe I'll end them up. Dry bar, if you're listening, make a mini curling iron that you can put in your purse. That'd be great. Also, at the top of my hair, I tend to do smaller sections than the bottom chunks, just because I want to make sure the top of my hair is like a little bit curlier than the bottom. It doesn't matter if the bottom, like underside, falls a little bit, but I want to make sure the top and like kind of the the layer that shows the most is super curly. ever a curl that doesn't seem to come out of the curling iron quite as curly I usually just take it and twist it a little bit so that it can get that shape a little bit more in there all right we're gonna let those cool off before hairspraying them but I'm gonna move on to this side this is exactly why I start from the back because sometimes those little hairs they just want to they just want to stay back there and they hide from you and that's not fun starting at the back of my head still curling away from my face though and curling all the way up to the root and then twisting the barrel so that I get all the way down to the ends of my hair <laughs> This last little piece of hair is like the perfect example of why I like to start with my curling iron at the root and then pull it down. It's because of all my little baby hairs and I found that if I just try to start at the bottom and curl my way up, the baby hairs don't get in and then they like stick out and then they don't get curled and then it's just a disaster. So that is why I start at the root, work my way down. And even on this one, I kind of just like 
I just leave the curling iron up at the top and then continue using the little twisty barrel to, to wrap my hair till it's all the way down at the ends. That's why I love the fact that it has this twisty barrel because you can do things like that where you start at the top and then just continue twisting your hair around so that it gets all the way down the barrel and you get your whole piece of hair curled without having to like worry about your little wispies and flyaways. That's one reason I love this curling iron. That and the fact that it makes these gorgeous little ringlet curls. And then once you brush them out, they just like turn into this absolutely amazing, 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 voluminous curl look. Gonna let those cool down for a hot second and then we'll hairspray it and then we'll brush it out and I can show you exactly what I mean by the big voluminous Texas style hair that this lovely curling iron creates. Now that those are dry, I'm going to take my hairspray again and just spray everything. Don't want it going anywhere. Last step is actually breaking up these curls, brushing it all out, seeing it in its full, beautiful, glorious, voluminous curl, curliness. I don't know. To see the final product, we gotta brush it all out. So I'm, I'm trying to decide what brush I wanna use. Yeah, I'm actually going to use this brush instead of this brush, so we'll see how this goes. And I don't like to brush it like all the way through to be honest, I kind of just brush very lightly over each of my curls. One part that I definitely like to brush like fully is my part, so I just will take my brush, run it just through the top. I don't go all the way through down the bottom of my curls because I found that that breaks up too much, but just doing that breaks up the little individual sections of curl that we did. So that way they don't look like those individual curls. You know what I mean? That is why I brush through the root of my hair. And then once I do that, I can just use my fingers to tame any of those like I don't know what I'm trying to say, tame any of those wild hairs that are popping out. And then I just take my fingers and run them through the very bottom of my hair to break up those curls even further. Do like a little flippy, whippy poo. That is, that is what I do. Once I get my curls how I want them to look once they're brushed out and looking pretty, do one last layer of hairspray just to make sure those stay in place and then you're done. That is my curl tutorial. I hope this was super helpful for you guys, teaching you how to use this fabulous curling iron. I seriously could not recommend it more. I love it, I love it, I love it. If you did enjoy this video and you did find it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And again, comment below if you have a hairspray that you really do love and you think makes a huge difference because I seriously want to know. <laughs> and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Would love for you to stay up to date on all of my newest videos. And I will see you guys next time.